Hey guys, I'm Max and welcome back to Hope Once. So, a couple months ago, I was browsing the forums and I came upon this Panerai for sale. Now, Panerais tend to be big watches and you guys know that I don't have the beefiest wrist. And so I never even thought that these watches were in the running for me. But this Panerai 48 was advertised to be 40 millimeters. Uh, and the seller, you know, had this whole story about how he was trying to finance a car and he needed to sell some of his watches. And so I thought, hmm, maybe this is my chance to finally try a Panerai. Now, Panerai as a company actually has a really cool history. If you don't know, around the early 20th century, they made watches for the Royal Italian Navy and specifically for these divers named the Frogmen. The Frogmen were the legendary diving commandos of the Royal Italian Navy. When a military contract was offered to Panerai for diving watches, the company had none to offer, and so Guido Panerai turned to the only company with the known waterproof oyster case, Rolex. In this collaboration, we would see Rolex provide Panerai with their first radiomere watches, which grew to an utilitarian 47 millimeters, but still bared an uncanny resemblance to the cushion case shape of the Oyster. Panerai would then modify these cases and combine it with their radium sandwiched dials for luminescence. Radium, not known at the time to be radioactive, has its own notorious history. Across the pond, women who worked in radium factories in the US painted watch dials and were endearingly called the radium girls. Factory owners would often encourage them to use saliva to wet the tips of their brushes, leading many to die of radiation poisoning. In fact, a movie based on this ominous story is due to be released this year. And so, equipped with their new radio mirrors, the Frogmen conducted underwater missions during World War II, most famous of which was the raid on Alexandria, when six men were able to cripple an entire fleet of Allied ships, nearly turning the tide of the war. Okay, so back to this Panerai 48. So there were some really great pictures in the ad, but the seller had no feedback and the watch didn't come with box or papers. But you know, I was excited and I did a quick search on Chrono24 uh, and so I threw out a lowish offer and he took it immediately. So I thought, you know, what's the worst that could happen? I could get the watch, wear it for a while. If I didn't like it, I could always sell it. So fast forward a week later and the watch had arrived. Let's take a look at it. Now, having never handled a Panerai before, I didn't really know what to expect. What struck me first was just how simple this watch was. Intricate is not a word you would use to describe this thing, but the brushing was clean and the engraving on the case back was crisp. The only thing that really underwhelmed me was the flimsy, plasticky strap that it came with. So I wore this watch for about a month, and I have to say, initially, I was pleasantly surprised by how well it fit on my wrist. But after a while, I just noticed that I stopped reaching for it in my watch box, and so I decided to put it up for sale. And this is when things started to go sideways. Uh, I put up an ad on the forums to sell this Panerai, and I had some people ask me to verify the authenticity of the watch. And I did a little research. I didn't realize how many fake Panerais there were. And around the same time, I was able to borrow a Panerai that was known to be real. And so I took both watches over to my watchmaker at Nesbitt's and had Tom take a look. So the first thing you want to look at is the crispness of the lettering and the markers. You can look at the engraving on the back. There's a certain quality that <clears throat> most higher end Swiss brands will have. 
Pretty close. It's pretty close. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm going to call this one the fake. Yeah, the uh, quality of the engraving, the quality of the screw heads, the damascening on the plates is of much higher quality than the engraving of this. Mm -hmm. If there were, if this were based off of a caliber 70750, it's the wrong regulator system, uh, wrong shock absorber system. So needless to say, that was not a good day for me. My heart just sank. I thought I made a $3,000 mistake and I was really beating myself up for not doing more research. If you've enjoyed this story so far and maybe you've seen a couple of videos on this channel and you appreciate the content, consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon below. So anyway, uh, while we've got both watches, let's take a look at them side by side. At first glance, you'd be hard pressed to tell genuine from fake. So let's get a little closer. There's a bit more wayward particles hanging onto the hands on the fake, but the printing is pretty crisp on both. Let's get closer still. I want you to pay attention to the center pinion cap. You see how the surface is nice and smooth on the real watch? Whereas on the fake, we can appreciate its uneven texture. Subtle, I know. But once we open the case back, the difference becomes clear as day. I don't think I need to tell you which is the poor imposter here. I was fully expecting the loom on the fake watch to die quickly, but as you can see, it manages to hang around with the big boys. Let's take a look at this PAM 634. At 44 millimeters, I should have no business wearing this watch on my sub 7 inch wrist, but surprisingly, it works somehow. This is actually one of 500 special edition watches, specifically made to commemorate the 15th year anniversary of the Panaristi website, a gathering place for lovers of the brand. Engaging with its signature crown guard and the hand-wound Unitas movement is a pleasure. With its broad lugs and muscular shape, the watch oozes masculinity, but in a refined and approachable way. Imagine Sylvester Stallone in a suit. So this story does have a happy ending. I reached out to the seller. He was able to give me a partial refund. So let this be a cautionary tale for all of us. Learn from my mistakes. Don't get carried away by the emotions in the process of buying a watch and really do your research. What do they say? Buy the seller, not the watch, right? Okay, in the comments below, let me know your harrowing watch buying stories. So best of luck on your next watch hunt. Until next time, Take care.